There are two cities, beloved, throughout the word of God. And you're a citizen, really, of one or the other. The first city is Babylon. And Babylon is the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. The second is Jerusalem, the city of righteousness, where God has placed his name and where righteousness dwells. Which city are you headed for? Which city are you a member of? We're in the closing chapters of Jeremiah. Can you believe it? We are about finished. We have spent eight weeks on Jeremiah part two. And if you put that whole series together, part one and part two, I mean, you know that God has ordained the teaching of the book of Jeremiah for this time. Well, we're looking today at two cities. We're looking at Babylon. God's going to deal with Babylon in Jeremiah chapter 50 and 51. God's going to deal with Jerusalem, the city of God, in Jeremiah chapter 52. We are in Jeremiah chapter 50, and I'm having to make tracks, and you all know it because we have lots to cover. But in Jeremiah chapter 50, we are looking at the roots of Babylon. And so this is what I want you to do. In your Bible, and I would suggest you use a pencil so you can move it around, but next to verse 12, where he talks about Babylon's mother, and she who gave you birth will be humiliated. Behold, she will be the least of nations, a wilderness, a parched land, and a desert. Next to that, write Genesis chapter 11, verse 1 through 9. Now, in Genesis chapter 11, we find the city of Babel. We find them making a tower that reaches from earth to heaven so that they won't be scattered around the earth, all right? And this is the descendants of Shem, Ham, and Japheth. But it is Ham's descendant, Nimrod, that makes this kingdom and calls it Babel. So when you come to Genesis chapter 11, what you find is you have man uniting against God, uniting in disobedience against God thinking that they can get away with it. So they build a city, they build a tower, God comes down to look at the city, and this is what he says in verse 6 of uh, Genesis 11. They are one people. They all have the same language. This is what they begin to do. Now, nothing which they purpose to do will be impossible for them. What he's talking about is man is made in the image of God. Man is brilliant. Man has all sorts of abilities, but some men have this kind of ability, others have this kind, and what you do is you put them all together, and when you put them all together, if they have a purpose, it's going to be hard to stop them. And God wants to stop them. And the reason he wants to stop them is because they are sinners. Because they are sinners. And they will just go deeper and deeper and deeper into sin. This is what's happening in America. You throw off the restraints of God and you go deeper and deeper into sin. It all becomes about you, your way, your politics, uh, you know, a disregard, just using God to get your way, but not really following God. So he comes down and he confuses their language and it says in verse 8, so the Lord scattered them abroad. God's purpose as we're looking at this week, we're looking at the purposes of God which he will perform. It will come to pass. As he is purpose, show so it will come to pass. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of the whole sit, uh, earth and they stopped building the city. Therefore, its name was called 
Babel because there the Lord confused the language of the whole earth. Now, this is the root. But let's go to the future because what I'm about to read to you in Jeremiah does not, for the most part, fit the destruction of Babylon when the Medes and the Persians came in and conquered them, as is recorded in Daniel chapter 5. So you come to Revelation chapter 17. In Revelation chapter 17, it's talking about the judgment of a great harlot who sits on many waters, now watch, with whom the kings of the earth committed acts of immorality. And those who dwell on the earth were made drunk with the wine of her immorality. Now you've got to remember, he's not talking about getting literally in bed, but he uses immorality as a description of us playing the harlot against God, not making God the habitation of our righteousness, walking away from God and being adulteresses. You adulteresses, don't you know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? So we crawl in bed with the, uh, with the world. All right, so Babylon, this city, is represents the great harlot with whom the kings of the earth and the people of the earth commit immorality. And it says in verse 5, on her forehead a name was written, a mystery, Babylon the great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. You want to see all the immorality? You want to see all the abominations of the earth? Then I tell you what, you look at this city. You look at the world. Well, you come over, and this is part of your homework, so I hope you got your study guide. And if you didn't, you need to get it. You say it's too late. No, you can stop and study. You can get all these uh, uh, CDs or DVDs on the book of Jeremiah. You can get a study book that will help you. You can do this, and you can teach it to your family, or you can use it to disciple another person. So I ask you to go through Revelation 17 and 18. Now, verse 15, he said to me, the waters that you saw where the harlot sits are peoples, multitudes, tongues, and nations. And the ten horns which you saw, now this is the final world power, the power of the Antichrist, and the beast, these will hate the harlot and will make her desolate and naked and will eat her flesh and burn her up with fire. Now remember, we're talking about God's purposes. So watch what it says. For God has put it in their hearts, this final world kingdom, this kingdom of the Antichrist, this kingdom of the beast, this kingdom of the man of lawlessness, this kingdom of the little horn of Daniel chapter 7. It says, God has put it in their hearts to execute his purpose by having a common purpose. In other words, you see these nations gathered together again in a common purpose purpose. But it's God. They're, God's going to use those ungodly nations to fulfill his purpose on Babylon, this harlot of, of abominations and immoralities. And then it says, execute his purpose by having a common purpose and by giving their kingdom to the beast until the words of the Lord be fulfilled. Now watch what he says. The woman whom you saw is the great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. You say, it's Rome. It sits on seven mountains. No, honey, it's not. That bad interpretation was passed down because somebody didn't study inductively. They didn't discover truth for themselves. So now, in, cha in chapter 18, you have the judgment of this harlot. 
He cried out with a loud voice, a mighty voice. Verse 2, fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. You're going to see that in Jeremiah. You see it in Jeremiah 51, 8. You see it in Isaiah 21, 9. And you see it in Revelation 14, 8, the fall of Babylon. She has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison of every unclean spirit and a prison of every unclean and hateful bird for all the nations. Now re remember this verse. It's going to get so good. You're going to be so excited. For all the nations have drunk the wine of the passion of her immorality and the kings of the earth have committed acts of immorality with her and the merchants of the earth have become rich by the wealth of her sin. Sensuality. And then he says this, I heard another voice from heaven saying, now hang on, you're going to love it when you get to Jeremiah. Come out of her, my people, so that you will not participate in her sins and receive of her plagues. Now it says in verse 8, for this reason in one day her plagues will come, pestilence and mourning and famine, and she will, you want to get this, will be burned with fire. It says uh, uh, she will be burned with fire for the Lord God who judges her is strong. Just remember this. God is stronger than all of them. He is omnipotent. He is all powerful. And the kings of the earth who committed acts of immorality and live sensuously with her will weep and lament when they see the smoke of her burning. Oh, precious one. It is so neat to see these things and then to go back and read Jeremiah. That's what we're about to do. But it says in verse 19, they threw dust on their heads and were crying out, weeping and mourning, saying, whoa, whoa, the great city in which all the ships at, who had ships at sea became rich by her wealth. For in one hour, she has been laid waste. So what you have is you have a total desolation of this city, this great city that rules over the kings of the earth because there is an empire, a 10 horned and then an 11th horned empire that is the final empire of the last days that goes against Babylon and destroys her and fulfills God's purpose and carries out what God has to say is going to happen to Babylon in the last days. So when we read Jeremiah, you go back to Genesis and remember her beginnings, rebellion against God. Then you go to Revelation and you see her end. And then you read Jeremiah and you have a better understanding. We'll do it. We'll start it in just a minute. Welcome back, beloved. Get that Bible open to Jeremiah chapter 50. We got lots to cover, but we're ready. We're ready because we understand what Revelation says about the demise of Babylon. And what you're going to see is that in Jeremiah, he's taking us all the way to that in time. You'll be able to sort it out as we go along and we'll do it together. Verse 14, draw up the battle lines against Babylon on every side. 50 verse 14, all you who bend the bow, shoot at her. Do not be sparing with your arrows for she, Babylon, has sinned against the Lord. Raise your battle cry against her on every side. She has given herself up. Her pillars have fallen. Her walls have been torn down down for this is the vengeance of the Lord. You say, how do I know 
That's not what happened when Babylon was conquered by the Medes and the Persians. You know because you read about how they got into the city and how they come into this big hall where the king is having a party and they're drunk and they're drinking out of the vessels from Jerusalem, from the house of the Lord, and they're toasting and all of a sudden many, many tickle you sarps and they're writing on the wall your days are numbered. They didn't destroy Babylon then. They did not destroy Babylon. So there has never been a destruction like this of Babylon. Babylon continues to be inhabited. There's a wonderful book, and it's by Charlie Dyer, and it is on the rise of Babylon, and I would suggest that you get it and read it. It has pictures and everything and can show you, hey, these scriptures that you're reading about its total desolation has never really happened to Babylon yet. Now, let's go on. It says, as she has done to others, so do to her. Cut off, from the, cut off the sower from Babylon and the one who wields the sickle in the time of harvest. It says, from before the sword of the oppressor, they will each turn back to their own people. They will each flee to their own land. In other words, he's saying, get out of her. Get out of here. And so they're going to flee. Israel is a scattered flock. The lions have driven them away. Now, who are the lions? He's not talking about literal lions. It says the first one who devoured him was the king of Assyria. The last one who has broken his bones, Israel's bones, is Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Because Assyria came against Israel and was the enemy, but they did not invade the city and tear down the walls and tear down the temple, but Nebuchadnezzar did. We read about it in Jeremiah 52. We'll see it at the end of this week. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I am going to punish the king of Babylon and his land just as I punished the king of Assyria. And I will bring Israel back to his pasture, and he will gaze on Carmel. He's going to, God is going to bring Israel back to the land of Canaan, back to the land of Israel, now called Eretz Israel, never in the Bible called the land of Palestine. His desire, Israel's desire, will be satisfied in the hill country of Ephraim and Gilead. It's a beautiful hill country. In those days and at that time declares the Lord, you want to march the, mark the time phrase, search will be made for the iniquity of Israel. But there will be none and for the sins of Judah, but they will not be found. Remember the new covenant. This is the new covenant when I will take away their sins. I will be their God. They will be my people. He says, for I will pardon those whom I leave as a remnant. Not all Israel will be saved. Zechariah tells us that they'll go through the fire, but only one third will survive. Against the land of Merathim, go up against it. Against the inhabitants of Pekod, slay and utterly destroy them. Both of those places are in the south of Babylon. And one means double rebellion or punishment, the first one. And the other one is Pekod, which is on the bank of the Tigris River. He says the noise of battle is in the land. What land? The land of Babylon and great destruction. How the hammer of the whole earth has been cut off and broken. Who's the hammer? Who's the hammer of the whole earth? Who's the one that God has used as his hammer to execute his judgment against Israel because Israel would not believe, because Judah would not believe? It is Babylon. But he says, now this hammer is broken. And he goes on to say how Babylon has become an object of horror among the nations. I set a snare for you, and you were also caught, O Babylon, while you were not aware 
you have been found and you have been seized while you were not aware. Listen, beloved, you and I need to be prepared for the days ahead. And that's the purpose of precepts for life. It's to establish you in God's word so that you will know truth and you will be able to live accordingly. He says, the Lord has, you have been found and seized because you have engaged in conflict with the Lord. In other words, you're opposing God. You're not making him the habitation of your righteousness as we talked about yesterday and as we see in verse 7 of this chapter. The Lord has opened his armory. He has brought forth the weapons of his indignation. It is the work of the Lord God of hosts in the land of the Chaldeans. Come to her from the farthest border. Open her barns. Pile up her heaps and utterly destroy her. That's what you read about in Revelation. Let nothing be left to her. Babylon is to be utterly destroyed. You don't want to be part of that city. You don't want to be part of that mindset. You don't want to be part of this harlotry and the abominations of the earth. You need to believe on Jesus Christ. When you believe on Jesus Christ, then you move to the heavenly city, Jerusalem. It becomes your future. It becomes your habitat for all of eternity. You can read about it in Revelation chapter 21 and 22. Put all of her young bulls, speaking of Babylon, to the sword. Let them go down to the slaughter. Woe be unto them, for their day has come, the time of their punishment. Remember, God has a time, a day, an hour. There is a sound of fugitives and refugees from the land of Babylon to declare in Zion the, uh, the vengeance of the Lord, vengeance for his temple. In Jeremiah 52, you're going to see the destruction of the temple. So God is going to take his people out of Babylon. He's going to bring a remnant. They're going to come to Zion and they're going to testify of what they saw. And they're going to say, God's purpose stands. He has brought vengeance for his temple. Summon many against Babylon, all those who bend the bow. Encamp against her on every side. Let there be no escape. And that's what you see in Revelation. You see the nations coming against her, or you see this coalition of nations. According to all she has done, so do to her. We sow to the flesh, we reap of the flesh. We sow corruption, we reap corruption. For she... Babylon has become arrogant against the Lord, against the Holy One of Israel. We've seen that arrogance in Genesis. We see that arrogance in Revelation. We see that arrogance throughout the word of God. Therefore, her young men will fall in the streets and all her men of war will be silenced in that day, declares the Lord. Behold, I am against you, O arrogant one, declares the Lord of hosts. For your day has come, the time when I will punish you. The arrogant one will stumble and fall. You don't want to belong to that city. Oh, beloved, oh, beloved. Listen carefully. This is your precept for life today. Don't walk in arrogance against God. Don't think that you can live your own way and get away with it. The purposes of God stand. What God has purposed, he will perform. You say, but I haven't seen the judgment of God. I haven't experienced the judgment of God. I'm running my own life. I'm happy. I'm satisfied. Uh, you know, I've got my lover. I've got my money. I've got my wealth. I've got my position. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just satisfied. Oh, that satisfaction is going to come to an end. Because God has purpose that sin must be judged. He is just and he is righteous in all of his ways. I want to take you back to Revelation, to the back of the Bible, to the end of the book, to the end of the story. 
Now, it's not quite the end. We're going to come to that at the end of this week. But I want you to see what he says. He says, Babylon, the great city, will be thrown down with violence and will not be found any longer. Revelation 18, 21. Now, verse 22. The sound of the harpists, the musicians, and the flute players, and the trumpeters will not be heard in you any longer. Oh, they had a lot of merrymaking in there. No craftsman of any craft will be found in you any longer. They had all sorts of works of their hands that were beautiful. The sound of a mill will not be heard in you any longer. They're not going to be able to support themselves. Why? Because the light of the lamp will not shine in you any longer. The voice of the bridegroom and the bride will not be heard in you any longer. Why? For your merchants were the great men of the earth. I mean, the politicians going after one thing. And that is wealth. It's money, 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 money. Because all the nations were deceived by, your, by her sorcery. And in her was found the blood of prophets and saints and of all those who have been slain on the earth. What were they doing in Babylon? They were killing and getting rid of those who loved God. You can expect it, beloved. You can know this, that there is going to be a, a more intense mood move against Christians, against those that belong to God, against those that are holy. They want to destroy you because you're a condemnation to them. Be that, because God will destroy them. <laughs> 